Okay, multivariable calculus, we've got to find extreme values, so the absolute min and max of this two-variable function on a closed triangle with these vertices. So whenever they ask about these questions for absolute values, or for absolute min and max, they're always going to give you some, some D, like a disk or, or an area, where you have to test uh, along the boundaries of that area. So the first step is to actually draw this triangle out because that will tell us sort of what we're dealing with. So our first vertices at 1, 0, second one's at 5, 0, so 1, 5, and the other one's at 1, 4. So that's 4 there, and it's just a simple triangle. So how do we find absolute max and mins? We have to test uh, critical points, so where the first derivatives, first partial derivatives in terms of x and in terms of y are one, are zero. Sorry, those are the critical points, and then we also have to test the boundaries of our region. So the, um, the first thing I'm going to do is find those partial derivatives. So f x, so the partial derivative in terms of x of x y is I'm just deriving this function where I'm ignoring the y terms and counting those as constants. So this will be y minus 1. And the f of, in terms of y of x, y, here I'll think of the x's as constants, uh, and we get x minus 2. So now we're setting both of these equal to 0, and we can see that that will only happen when x is 2 and when y is 1. So the point 2, 1 is a critical point. Now because we're just finding absolute min or max, we don't need to test, we don't need to do the second derivative test or anything like that. We just need to actually find out what the value is. So I'm going to find f of 2 comma 1 and so I'm just plugging it back into the original function. So I get 3 plus 2 times 1 minus 2 minus 2 times 1 and what is that? 5 minus 2 is 3 minus 2 is 1. So my value at the point 2, 1, that critical point uh, of our function is 1. So now we'll compare that to our boundary values to see which one's the highest, which would be the absolute max, and which one's the lowest, which would be the absolute min. To test these boundaries, we actually have to think of them as lines. So this bottom one, I'm going to think of this as the line uh, where x changes, but y is always 0, right? We're on the x-axis no matter what. And then x goes between 1 and 5. For the vertical one, it's also easy. This is the, any point on this line is the point 1, comma, y, because x is always 1, but y is changing, and y goes between 0 and 4 there. Now this one's a little bit trickier, but still pretty straightforward. This is the line y equals negative x plus 5. It's a negative 1 slope, uh, plus 5. And this, uh, we're going to use, because that's a line and there's not one set coordinate, they're both changing, we're going to use that in terms of substitution. So I'm going to go one at a time. Let's start with this bottom one that I figured out. So f of x, 0. I'm going to put... Uh, 0 in for y in our original equation. So we get 3 minus x. That's what this ends up coming out to. And so we say, okay, well, where can this be maximized uh, knowing that x has to fall in this domain, 1 to 5? Well, it can be max when x is 1. So at the point 1, 0, 3 minus x, 3 minus 1, that will be 2. And it will be minimized when x is as high as it can be because we're minusing x. So that'll be at 5, 0. And that equals 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. Okay, so those are the values um, on the boundaries. And again, we, we've ended up taking the endpoints of this line. So at 1, 0, fxy is 2. And at 5, 0, fxy is negative 2. Let's do the vertical one. So now the line f1, comma y. Again, I'm going to simplify the original function by plugging in 1 for x and leaving y. So I'll get 3 plus y minus 1 minus 2y. So this equals uh, 2 minus y. Again, this is a decreasing function as y increases. So the max it will be is at the beginning when y is 0. So at the point 1, 0, 
We already know this is 2 because that's 1, 0 is also here. And it'll be minimized when y is as big as it can be. And since we're on this line where y can only go up to 4, this is the point 1, 4. Plug that in there and we get uh, negative 2. Okay, so we've done our critical points and we saw that that gave us a value. I'll circle all the values in orange. Uh, uh, 1, then we did our horizontal boundary and we got values of 2 and negative 2 did our vertical boundaries and we got 2 and negative 2 again now we have to test the line I'm going to use substitution so I'm going to plug negative x plus 5 in everywhere I see a um, so I'm basically going to get this equation fx and then instead of y it'll be negative x plus 5 so if we sub those into the original we get 3 plus x into negative x plus 5 minus x minus 2 into negative x plus 5. Just subbing that in for the y's. Simplifying this, we get 3 minus x squared plus 5x minus x plus 2x minus 10. Hopefully I did that right. Uh, which will give us negative x squared plus 6x minus 7. Okay, so in other words, our function now is uh, based on, a, this is a parabola, right? How do we find the max or min of a parabola? Well, we need to get it in vertex form. So I'm just going to factor out the negative from the first two terms. Complete the square. I know this is kind of drawn out, but this is what needs to happen. I'm going to kind of fast forward this, so it would be plus 9 minus 9. Uh, so that comes out as a plus 9, minus 7. So the vertex of this, x minus 3 squared, plus 2. So the vertex of this happens at 3, 2. And the, um, the vertex of the parabola happens at, at the point 3, 2. And it's a negative in front, so we know it's facing down. Uh, so all I'm going to go back and I'm going to find f of 3 comma 2 and that equals 3 plus 3 times 2 I'm just plugging this back into the original minus 3 minus 2 times 2 which is 9 minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7 equals 2. So once again, we've got, I'll circle that in orange, once again, we've got this value of 2. So now we just compare all the values and find what's the largest, what's the smallest. Well, the largest is 2, and that happens, so the absolute max is 2, and that happens at the point 1, 0, and the point uh, 3, 2. Okay, so there's our absolute maxes. And then the minimum value where can I write that? I'll write the absolute minimums are minus 2, and that happens at the point uh, 5, 0, and 1, 4. So there's two points where you'll find an absolute maximum, two points where you'll find an absolute minimum on this interval. So again, test the uh, boundaries of your region as well as the critical points which are found when the first derivative first partial derivatives are equal to 0